Welcome back to the Peric Project. Let me tell you an interesting anecdote about Rabbi Loza ben Bartosa. Usually, when a person knows that someone's going to ask him for charity or for a donation, we try and avoid it. Rabbi Loza was the opposite. We're told that when charity collectors, instead of asking him, they would hide from him because he was so charitable that the charity collectors were so afraid that they would give him, that he would give them his last penny. In fact, it happened once that someone was collecting and they saw Rabbi Elazar coming and they ran and they hid and Rabbi Elazar knew that was a charity collector so he ran after him he said what are you collecting for he said I'm collecting for the wedding of an orphan and he said wow that deserves the most and he proceeded to give him almost up to his last penny that's how charitable he was now how does a person become so charitable So he teaches us his secret. He tells us, give him from his own for you and your possessions are his. What does he mean by this? He's saying, don't withhold, whether it's our wealth or even ourselves from being used to fulfill God's will in this world. Because everything that you have is from God. Yesterday, I had the honor to hear from someone nowadays who lives with this mindset. There's a guy in Israel, his name is Steve Gar, and he works in the, in the anti-terrorist department in the IDF. And he was sharing with us how whenever, God forbid, there's a terrorist attack in Israel, he runs towards the danger, even though he's a guy with a wife and a kid, and he puts himself at risk so often. And he was asked, like, what drives you to do it? And he answered the modern day answer to this Mishnah. He said, because my greatest fear is facing God at the end of my life and saying I didn't use my potential. And the amazing thing about developing this mindset is it leads us to true humility. What is true humility? It's not when a person doesn't recognize his worth, but on the opposite, they recognize exactly how much they're worth. They they understand all their strengths, but they realize that it's on loan to us from God. And it's just like someone who borrows a dress for an event and they're wearing the dress. They're not going to ba- brag and boast, wow, look how wonderful my dress is. They may accept the compliments, but they understand that they're using it for the event and they have to take good care of it because they have to return it. So too, when we have true humility, when we understand that everything that we have is a gift to us from God, whether it's our our financial situation, whether it's our talents, whether it's our personality, even time, it's all a gift from us from God. We recognize that we have to understand what our worth is and we have to use that to develop ourselves and to do good and in, in this world. And what's amazing about it is that in, when a person gives us a loan, they ask for it all back. But when God, he gives us so much, he gives us time and our talents and he's not asking for all of it back. He's just saying, give a part of it back. For example, like when God gives us wealth, we don't have to give all of it to charity. We only have to give some of it to charity. And practically, in fact, we're told that with our wealth, when when we when we're given it, we should separate immediately a certain percentage, ideally 10% of that, to charity. Why? Because once it's already separated, we'll find it easier to give that to to charity. We won't feel that sense of remorse. We'll have that understanding that it was given to us as a gift. And part of that gift means it's a loan to pay it forward, just like it is a loan with our time and our talents and everything else that we have. God gives it to us to use and to enjoy and to remember that it's alone and we have to use it well to do God's will in this world. We just said that Hashem only asks us to give back part of what he gives us of what he gave us part of the wealth that he gives us we should give to charity part of the strength that he gave us we should dedicate to Torah and spiritual pursuits 
So the next Mishnah sounds very, very strange. Rabbi Yaakov tells us that someone who walks on the road and he's reviewing his Torah study and he interrupts it to say, how beautiful is this tree? He bears the guilt for his own soul. What does it mean here? So firstly, we have to understand something and we've explored this a few times before. Torah study, spiritual pursuits, mitzvahs is what makes the world go round and it's what protects us. So a person who's on the road, being on the road is signifies being a little bit in danger, especially if we think years gone by. And if a person stops the spirituality that is keeping them protected, then they themselves are weakening their own protection. And while, of course, Maimonides said, told us that the way to come to love and fear God is by contemplating the amazing wonders of the world. When we go out, we see a stunning sunset. It makes us think, wow, when we contemplate the miracle of a baby or so many different miracles of nature, it can bring us to closeness to God. But when we study Torah, when we do mitzvahs, that's like the primary highway. So he's telling us, don't stop. Don't lose your focus on the primary highway of connecting to God, of connecting to spirituality by by using the secondary highway, which is the, the connection to God through looking at nature. And the wording of the Mishnah is important because while one is certainly allowed to interrupt Torah study in order to earn a living or to take care of our needs of life, what the Mishnah is telling us is that when living a comfortable life becomes a person's primary focus, instead of living a good, meaningful life, that is when he's sacrificing his soul. So the Mishnah is reminding us that we are here in this world for a purpose. And God has given us many gifts that we can bring to this world. And we have to maintain that focus, that that is our primary focus. Our focus here is to maintain the integrity of our soul and to use the gifts that God gave us to fulfill his will in this world.